to the next level live. I have a special guest. I didn't know, Precious, you've never been on Next Level Live. Nope. So we talked, how long ago was that, Mike, after Cat got on here? We said, we're going to get all the staff on. That was um, a long time ago. That was back in November. Yeah. So Cat either did really good, and we didn't want to set you up, or she didn't do well, and we kind of thought she was fine. <laughs> but we really want to be able to work really hard in the corporate office. You guys work really hard in the corporate office to, to bring um, as much value as we can to the agents. And we have a lot of agents, Precious, that are building a team, mm -hmm. you know. Um, they, they're, they're licensed, they're, set, they're looking at it going, you know what, I can make X selling life insurance, but I'd either, I, I'd like to help out people I know, I'd like to, um, I want to make more money, I want to build a business where if, you know, something happens, I can't go to work on a certain day, I get paid, mm -hmm. I want to build some longevity, there's a lot of things that, and that is, listen, it's the most powerful part of our business, sell, life insurance is unbelievable, and anytime somebody goes, I'm struggling with five things, I go, sell, because that's always should be the answer, does it make, like, yes. I think for us, even back in 2008, I mean, you've been around for a while, like, it was go sell, mm -hmm. you know, well, I don't like you, because you can completely control that part of it, you know, um, it's, it's funny, I kind of equate it to like, like everybody struck, like I was talking to somebody the other day and the guy said, I've been working out seven days a week, I'm like, how, how you eating? I'm eating like garbage. I'm like, <laughs> well that's the problem, right? Cause, cause you can, like a lot of us, like I'll, I don't mind working out seven days a week, but I don't want to be crazy restricted on the diet. It's, it's <laughs> kind of like we'll control what we choose to control. And, um, you can control both of those. Um, I can make an argument. Some people go, I hate working out, but I love eating good, and vice versa. Here, we have complete and utter control of our production. 30 appointments a week, 40 hours a week, personal production. You're going to sell three, four hundred grand a year. I, I don't care who you are, what your background is. The hiring process, Precious, I also agree in some way that, and, and I think we're getting there, that if you put enough activity in, you're going to build a team. Um, what I want to talk about with you today is you. We, we don't keep agents direct, so we're kind of a hub, if you will, we do a lot of marketing where they come in here, right? Mm -hmm. They reach out to us through a myriad of marketing tools that we use, uh, mediums that we use. Sometimes they just reach out to us. Yep. Like I had a guy today, right, sends a very long email or response. I know him, I've known him for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And that's what's starting to happen, right? Like, what do I do? I'm like, I pick somebody to give them to, I don't keep them direct. <laughs> now, how do you pick the people to give them to? They have to work really hard. I have to know they're gonna help the person out and we help them build a business. You're like, Eric Schmidt's awesome. Yeah, I've known him for 20 years, <laughs> you know, or whatever it is. I mean, it's just like, and you know, you kind of find a team. What would you say, Precious, let's start with licensed agents. Okay. What would you say are the top two or three reasons they reach out to us? That they say, hey, you know what? Um, what do you all have to offer over there? What are you up to where I heard X, Y, and Z about your company? I would say it's either that they're looking for a higher compensation level mm -hmm. and they know that we go up to 140 or it's that they already have a high compensation level but they have no support, no type of team feeling and they want to actually learn how to sell because if you just have a high comp level but you don't know what you're doing, it doesn't matter. Correct. So those are the two things that we hear most commonly. And, and I think, you know, if you were to ask me, I think it would be you know, certainly comp, certainly the ability to be trained and leads. Mm -hmm. Right, and we get some of that too. Like, and sometimes we get people who just want leads. Yeah. <laughs> like, hey, I'm doing this over here. Can I get some leads? Yeah, if you work with like, we don't. There are all kinds of lead places to get them from. We let you get them wherever you want. We have phenomenal relations we set up that are a lot of them are exclusive to us that you can get them. But that's still you working with them. Um, what do you think when people are talking about not having that team atmosphere or not having that support? Um, what do you hear in, in, in their, when you're talking to somebody, how can you decide mm -hmm. he or she really wants to make a change or he or she's really just kind of talking about wanting to make a change, in your opinion? You know, you talk to however many different people a day, but you go, hey, I, you know, when you, you, if you were to send them over to so-and-so agent, you know, VP, whatever, mm -hmm. how would you disseminate between the two based on the phone conversation? I think there's a difference between an agent just complaining about their environment and someone who's actually talking about activity that they've done. So we'll hear from people that say things like, you know, I've been with this company for three months, I've spent 2500 on leads, I've driven to North Carolina for a training, but I still have nothing. Like they, they're trying and they're talking about their family and they're, they're talking about how, they've, how they, they pretty much are giving their last hope on this opportunity and they're desperate for some type of result and they're just trying to make it work. As opposed to someone who's saying their leads are bad. 
or you know, no one there can train me. It's just a, a difference in how they're talking about where they're at. And a lot of times the people that are, are even talking about looking to be with a the team, they'll say stuff like, you know, I don't want to say anything bad about the company, they're good people, but I just don't have the support. Correct. So I, I think that that individual is someone who, they just need to be in a different environment and can make a change. You know, it's crazy because I think it's such a simple leadership concept to find people in a place that want to grow and support them and find the ones that don't want to and leave them alone. Yeah. You don't need, I see more people spend more time talking about this group. Why, if, I, if I'm if i coaching a team and it's public high school football, we can't cut people, and Mike Stiers is on my team and he's afraid of contact, they run at him, he runs away. Mm -hmm. They run at him, he runs away. I go, hey, what's up? He goes, nothing. I go, nothing? You, this isn't Dodge person. You gotta like hit them. What are you doing? And he's not, then I just leave him alone. He comes to practice, he, he warms up, ain't nobody bothering him. He stays off the sidelines. As long as he hasn't disturbed the team, he's on the team, jersey and all. And he's gonna go to 10 Friday night games and never play, ever, because he doesn't like contact. But he, I don't think about him. I don't, now guess what? All of a sudden, the third week of practice, Precious, he comes out and starts hitting people. And I go, hey, come here for a minute, man. What's going on, bud? That's what he mean. I go, best practice you've had so far. He goes, I got tired of watching, coach. I really wanted to play. I just kind of had to, I just, I wanted to play. Hey, guess what? Now the past doesn't matter. Let's forgive him. Let's go. Can, can I teach you something? So for us, and what you said is so powerful, how many people, Precious, they've spent money somewhere else. They left a job. They lost a job. And we are their hope. What we do is very powerful. There's nothing more, well, one of the most concerning things for people is not be able to pay their bills and support their family. Yep. Have you been in a position before where you couldn't pay your bills? Yep. How does that feel? Terrible. Terrible. Don't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Don't want to think about it. Mm -hmm. You can't get out of your head. And you don't know how to fix it in that moment. For us, life insurance is the fix for everybody who's willing to work. I have not met anybody that has a license, they passed their test, they couldn't go sell 20, 30, 40 grand a month. Would you agree that anybody can do that? Yes. Now, some people have to work more than others. Yeah. I would agree with that too. I think we have some people at the company that can go run 12, 14 appointments a week and, and, and do great, good for them. The majority of us, not that way. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, when you are talking to somebody who says, you know, they're not as good as me, they can't train me, every lead I've always had is terrible. I, like, you know there's complaining, they're not, we always talk about, do you have a solution? You can have a problem, but you have to have a solution if not you're a complainer. Mm -hmm. Well, how does that conversation go with you, with them? So if I'm saying to you, Precious, listen, you know what, man, lead's terrible, all leads suck. Nobody can train me as good as I am, mm -hmm. and like, this whole thing just sucks. These guys are terrible, nobody knows what they're doing. I don't even know if you guys know what you're doing. How, how does that conversation with you go for me? I try to push it in either one of two directions, to either have them realize that they're the issue or to just not move forward because they're, we're gonna frustrate each other. So I'll ask additional questions like, do you feel that uh, there was anything that you could have done in that situation to change anything? Because there are people at your company that were having good results, so is there anything that you feel that you could have done differently? And some people will actually eventually you know, admit it like, yeah, I probably could have worked harder, I could have plugged into more trainings, and other people will just, no, I'm, I'm completely infallible in the situation, I did nothing wrong, and those individuals, I tell them, you know, what you're describing at that company, having to maybe drive a little bit to meet an appointment or uh, dealing with objection or rejection, those things will happen here as well. So if right. you just can't handle that whatsoever, what would change? And they usually are like, you're probably right, it probably won't change it. I might not just be a good fit for the insurance industry. And there's nothing wrong with that. And then we can just part ways amicably. All right, so Mike, when you hear Precious talk, why do you believe she's so unbelievably effective with people on the phone? Uh, she's confident and direct. I mean, you, you can tell that the way she's talking about what she, like she believes it. She, it's not just fluff, she's not making stuff up. And she's unemotional. Yeah. See, if I'm in an emotional place, okay, Precious, if I'm telling you what's, it's not working for me, mm -hmm. I'm thinking about my bills, I've been working at X company for whatever, five months, I'm already a little bit emotional. Fair enough. Yep. I'm already a little bit amped up, which means you're probably not getting the real me, you're getting the amped up me. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? There's the real me, there's the amped up me. Just like you, there'd be the real you, 
And like, are there things you're scared of? Yeah. Like what? <laughs> Give me something. The dark. Okay, the dark. So <laughs> if this entire place goes pitch black, we don't get the real you. Right. You're gonna knock that table over, <laughs> run into that door, maybe push it instead of pull it. You're gonna be not the real you. Yeah. Okay. Because you're that's a fear. Risk. Almost everybody's afraid of being. Nobody wants to be broke. So we have to also take into consideration that we may not be getting the truest um, impression of who that person is. And it's also okay for them to be off a little bit. But because you're not emotional with them, it allows them to kind of take a step back and probably come back down towards your unemotional deal. Because you're not saying, because there's another way to say it. Hey, are you really, I mean, you really think that you're not the cause of it? That'll work, right? Right. And then you're mad, this person's mad, and then they call me and go, this person, like, hey man, let me ask you something. Do you think in all of this there's some things you could have done a little bit differently? Yeah, yeah, I probably would. Okay, I'm just, I'm just, I don't know. I mean, for it's not a fact, I don't, but I'm asking you because, again, as we always say, somebody in the company's doing something. Yeah. Now, if you say to me, I worked, I had a guy the other day, I worked as hard as I can work, I have not made more than 200 grand. I believe I'm worth more. My family needs more. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. But I believe here I'm maxed out what I can make. And here are the reasons why. My comp, lack of renewals, my fees. Now that makes sense. Yep. Done. I got it. When do you want to get started? So how about unlicensed people? Do we have a lot of unlicensed people reaching out? We do. Okay. And what are their, if you had to, um, do they have any commonalities like current job, age, anything that where you say the majority of them, that could be 51%, are coming from this industry or? I, I think they come from all different kinds of industries. How do you think they find this industry since they're not in it at all? I think a lot of people have heard of a friend or family member who's done insurance before and they've heard about the better lifestyle you can have. The fact mm -hmm. that you can make your own hours, the fact that you don't have your own boss and they're attracted to that because they're a W-2 employee and they're, they're you know, struggling with something, but we get people who are you know, military, people who are stay-at-home moms, people who've never had a job. It, it's everyone, anyone from any industry calls in. Well, I think that's the other thing that we, we really gotta grasp nowadays moving forward is, um, you know, it's hard because you guys are so young, but like, <laughs> and a lot, even for what I'm gonna talk about, but back a long time ago, Precious, you know, in America, you got a job and you stayed in your job your entire like professional career, and you retired from it. And then you got a good retirement, and you got good medical. You had company picnics, company parties. You did that was not abnormal. You took your job. It was like, how many years do I got to work? You had enough to support a house, a couple cars, maybe a kid in college, and that. And then you had some retirement. You know, that with your Social Security, and like that was that was life. Like that was, but nowadays when these, these companies have almost all realized that I can do it cheaper outside of the country, right? Mm -hmm. I, can, I can do it, I mean, you know, every time I go to a new place and say like, I was at Stop Shop the other day, I'm like, when I used to work here, there are like 30 cashiers. <laughs> and now you bring your stuff through and boop, and it takes and you go, this is great. I'm like, yup, yup. And then there's a robot, yeah. clean, like, yeah. I was, that was great. I was messing with him, <laughs> him or her, I don't know if they're gender specific. But I was like walking around and it stops, it cleans the aisles. Yeah. It notifies the person. So I'm everywhere we're going, they're trying to find a way, they, people in business, people, to become more profitable mm -hmm. and pay less to staff. Because you all you gotta do is pay the robot one time to build it. Then they seem to make, they maintain themselves pretty well. But they don't call out sick. Mm -hmm. They don't need, I mean, there's a lot of things they don't need. So life insurance is one of those places where they need us to go eyeball the client. The actuaries need that to happen. The carrier and compliance needs that to happen. This is the way that it works. People were buying life insurance with a great depression and it allows you independence and really growing up, when you thought of somebody selling life insurance, you thought they're making money. Yeah. You didn't think like, oh, poor guy or girl, they're broke. No, you were like, they're making money. Mm -hmm. They sell life insurance, they make money. That right, Mike, that's what we yeah. always, that was it. even me. I'm like, I remember like thinking, man, so I can be three guys in my community that sold life insurance and all did well. Mm -hmm. So even if they, they weren't like, you know, the top earner in the entire state, they were doing well. So for us, it's understanding when people are calling us, I do think, number one, they're looking for independence. Yeah. And, and it may not even be, hey, I'm tired of working 80 hours a week. It's, I'm concerned if I don't get independent, I'm gonna be left out. Like, today I'm okay, but these three people just got laid off from their job. 
You know, my mother's got laid off for all those years. You gave her one day severance pa package. That was great. Like, you leave Thursday, we're going to pay you for Friday. See ya. That's it. I mean, that's it. All those years, 25, whatever it was, years. And it can happen to anybody. And I think what a lot of people want is they want that control because they're fearful. They're fearful their life can change in a minute. Can you imagine, like, we're not growing like weed and you're trying to figure it out? I mean, like... Thank God we're in this industry and thank God we're growing the way we are. We're going to keep growing the way we are. We're going to go past, you know, 150 to 250 to 400 to 500 million dollars in paid business we're going to. We're eventually going to issue a billion dollars in a year and that's going to happen. And it's going to happen, Precious, we have a myriad of people out there. Everybody needs life insurance. Most everybody admits they don't have it or don't have enough. And there are hundreds of millions of people out here. Mm -hmm. You talk about an industry, there's only like a million, two or a million, three that are licensed. Now we only have 7,000, so we certainly can grow a lot. But think about how many unlicensed people can be brought into the fold. Um, one last thing you want to say? You're doing good. Do you want to end like on what you already said? Do you guys want to kind of go out that way? Or do you want to give one piece of advice to everybody as it pertains to hiring? Hmm. Uh, my one piece of advice for hiring would be to not quit and to treat it like you treat your insurance sales. I think sometimes people try to hire and maybe they hire a couple of people and they quit and they get discouraged and then they never try it again and then five years later they wish they would have never stopped. So just keep always trying to hire. Don't give up. You will eventually start to see the fruit of your hard work. And don't take it personally. And don't take it personally. When clients don't want to buy life insurance that moment in time you do everything you can everybody's not going to buy. You're going to meet people that are in a bad, in a place for them that's frustrating or emotional and they might lash out. Don't think it's not personal. It's business. Business is not personal. Eric Schmidt. Yep. Unbelievable. Probably gonna issue 400 grand, didn't start full time yeah, until so. almost April or whatever it was. Don't miss it. To my buddy, good friend, great producer, help a bunch of families. All right, guys. Hey, uh, Sean asked me to jump on here and kind of go over uh, my last few months in the business. Uh, my name's Eric Schmidt, and my office is located right here in Uncasville at the corporate office and uh, Sean asked me to jump on and kind of go over the last few months of my business and how I've been consistently over $40,000 issue paid uh, going on here, you know, going on my fifth month. So uh, I think at the end of the day, it comes down to attitude and activity. So we're gonna go over that. Uh, we'll go over from the beginning, some exam prep. Uh, we'll talk about training, kind of what you're doing while you're waiting for your appointments to come through. Um, also gonna go over leads, schedule, in-home, phone, um, and we'll probably wrap up right where we started back at attitude and activity. So I think my biggest, my biggest tip when it comes to exam and exam prep is to go as fast as you humanly possibly can go. Um, I'm a dad. I have three kids, 14, 10, and 8. I'll be married 22 years here in a couple months, or a couple weeks rather, <laughs> next month. And um, when I was studying for the exam, I was working 60 hours a week at the car dealership. So with that, I still, you know, made sacrifices so I could get in front of that exam and pass it as fast as possible. So what did that mean? That means I sacrificed TV time, I sacrificed some family and kid time, I sacrificed um, some other things so I could study a couple hours before I left for work. I studied on my way to work, I studied at lunch during work, I studied on the way home from work, and I studied when I got home from work. So it took me about 10 days to get through the material. I know a lot of people are doing it quicker than that, but with what I had going on, that's about as fast as I get through the material so I could pass the exam. Um, so I passed my exam on December 4th of last year, 2018. And while I was waiting to get appointed, I was talking to other people about the opportunity, about what my plans were. And uh, watching as many videos and podcasts and spend as much time as I could with that because that's really all I had. Um, I didn't really know, I wasn't smart enough to call the carriers and ask for a startup kit, a new agent startup kit, which is something that we do now. Um, so that's what I did leading up to getting my appointments with the carriers. And while I was doing that, I was working with Eric Anthony, my, my manager on a lead strategy. And we put a lead strategy in place very early on and we stayed consistent with that for till now. I mean, every day, you know, we've stayed consistent with that. We've made some tweaks here and there, um, but for the most part, I got together with my manager, Eric Anthony, 
and we put together a lead strategy that um, has really worked well. So just to close out on the, uh, on the exam, schedule your exam day as soon as you possibly can. There's no reason to wait. As soon as ExamFX will allow you to schedule that exam, get it scheduled. Some states are different, I believe, but you wanna get that exam scheduled right away so you're held accountable for that date and you stay on track with your study guide. Uh, little tip on that too, don't memorize the questions and answers in the quizzes and the practice exams and the guarantee exams. I think that'll kind of head fake you to think that you know the material uh, when you really don't, you just really know the questions and the answers. And the state exams will change around the questions to make sure that you are reading the questions in their totality because that's what they want you to do when you're in the field. They want you to read the entire question. Not just enough where you think you know the answer and you answer it, they want you to read the entire questions and that's what it is like on the, uh, on the exam. So read the whole question, take the whole two hours, take breaks, they allow you to get up, they allow you to leave, they allow you to use the restroom. So use the whole entire two hours and um, read the questions more than once. It's really important that, uh, that you take all the time that they give you. Um, so with that, on day one, I shared all my goals with Eric, my manager. I believe the relationship that you have with your upline manager is very, very important. Um, they are gonna be your go-to person for your first several days, weeks, months in the business. So that is a super um, important relationship. It has to be transparent, it has to be real. Um, there's no reason to, you know, to beat around the bush on that relationship. It's what's gonna make or break you in this business. And um, thank goodness I had Eric as my manager because um, up to this point, you know, it's worked out uh, splendidly for, for myself and my family. Um, so I gave all my goals to him. Uh, they were personal goals, they were professional goals where I wanted to be. Some, some are on track, some I'm, be, I'm behind, um, but for the most part, um, we're right where we wanna be and we check in on those goals um, probably every two weeks just to make sure we're at where we're supposed to be. Um, in the very beginning, I was on the phone with Eric a lot, almost to a point where I, he probably wanted to block my number, but uh, thankfully he never did because I was calling him uh, almost 24 seven. Um, I think a really big part in the very, very beginning, depending on what, what you want to get out of this is you have to connect with your family on where your head is at and how much you want to get out of this. So I sat down with Carrie and Evan and Grace and Sarah, my three kids and my wife, uh, to talk to them about what daddy's doing. Um, I was in the car business for 24 years and this was a change. Uh, in the car business, there are set hours. There are a lot of them. That's why I needed to get out. And, but there were specific days off where, you know, here, you know, we have, a, we have a schedule that we work and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but you know, they knew that on Thursday, daddy wasn't going to work. Daddy was gonna be home and whether it was school drop-offs or swim lessons or practice or this, that, or the other thing, um, I told him it was gonna be a little bit different for, for a little while. Cause you know, at 47 years old, um, I'm a little bit behind, so I have a lot of catching up to do uh, to get to where I want to be. Um, so that was really big, and uh, we wanted, I wanted to make sure that Carrie and I were on the same page. And now Carrie is studying to get her license, so uh, we can even be more on the same page. So I'm super excited about that. So I went part-time uh, in January, and when I was speaking to Eric Anthony about what the next steps were, there was a lot of talk of this convention and the Venetian and what was going on in Las Vegas. And I was a little bit in the dark about it, I really didn't know what was going on, but I asked Eric, is this something I should go to? Is this something that's required? Do I should go, do I have to go? Um, I was still working full time, obviously. And the uh, suggestion from Eric Anthony was, if you want to grow, I would go to Las Vegas. If you don't, I would stay in Connecticut and be cold. Um, so that was an easy decision with the feedback from Eric and I uh, booked my room, I booked my tickets and uh, I got out to Las Vegas. And that was a game changer for me because being live face to face with all the leaders of this company, I've known Sean and Mike for a while, but you know, everyone else that we always see on YouTube and on Facebook, you know, it's important to get in front of those people because the knowledge that they share when just when you're in, you know, their area is super important. You know, see how they carry themselves, see how they talk, see how they train. Uh, and it's all free uh, this year at uh, Planet Hollywood. It, it's 
going to be out of control. Um, so if you haven't been to FFLTakeover.com to register for free for the free training, I would recommend you do that real fast. Um, but that was definitely uh, a game changer for me. So when I was still in the car business, I was probably doing 60 hours at the car dealership. And so when I say I was going part-time, I was doing my 60 hours at the car dealership and I was probably doing about 35 hours uh, with life insurance. Those 35 hours in the beginning were a lot of training, a lot of listening, a lot of calling Eric Anthony, and a lot of dialing uh, and getting into homes. And we'll talk about the phones here in a little bit, but my transition from full-time car dealership to full-time uh, life insurance sales wasn't that gigantic as far as a time commitment was concerned because I was already at 90 to 100 hours doing both combined. So when I transitioned to this, it was easy to pick up right where I left off and fill in all those hours that I was at the car dealership by focusing on selling life insurance and talking about the opportunity with warm market and cold market. So that was a pretty easy transition transition for me because I was already working the hours, true working. Um, I was you know, not punching the clock, but I was at the dealership for all those hours. Um, so I think another thing why you're transitioning from part-time to full-time, that that's your path, which a lot of people do. I would spend a lot of time on YouTube, um, all our YouTube channels. Uh, there's hours and hours and hours of, of training on there uh, with all of our podcasts. Uh, get plugged into all the Facebook pages, not only the Facebook page for your team, whether that's, you know, here in the Northeast, Southeast, West Coast, Texas, um, wherever, I would uh, get dialed in and plugged in and get invited to all those pages because there's nuggets on all those pages and it's definitely going to make you better for sure. Um, FFL New Agent is a great website to be on. FFL Mentor, uh, there's a lot of great nuggets on there. Um, that just, I'm, not, I'm probably leaving a lot out, but those are two that I go to along with YouTube and Facebook. Uh, moving into schedule. Um, I'm sure if you know depending on how long you've been with Family First Life the schedule here is that we dial the phones on Monday and we dial those phones until we're done to get a full schedule for Tuesday and a full schedule for Wednesday. So what does that look like? Um, you, the dial tracker that we hold ourselves accountable uh, with is we dial 100, 200, 250 dials in a day and we work a full day. You know typically when I was at the car dealership I either had an eight hour day or an 11 hour day. So a typical full day for me is about nine and a half hours. So if it takes eight hours or 11 hours or three hours to fill my Tuesday and Wednesday, that's the time I'm gonna to commit to getting my day filled. On Tuesday and Wednesday, we are out in the field and we are running those appointments. Uh, in the beginning, I was kind of going all over the place. You know, I would travel 100 miles one way and then I would have another appointment 100 miles the other and I would go back there. So. It definitely took some time on how to really get my schedule dialed in. So the sooner you can get that done with your manager, the better, because crisscrossing over, you know, big counties like in Texas or, you know, from Massachusetts to Connecticut here in the Northeast um, is not the best use of time. So uh, I would get, try to get that dialed in. But in the beginning, I was so excited. If I got an appointment, I'm like, yeah, done, I'm here. And then I would simply just, you know, drive all the way down to Norwalk, Connecticut, and then an hour and a half later, it have to be in you know Franklin County, Massachusetts, which is about 125 to 135 miles. So um, I would just take that down as a note to make sure that you look at your schedule and get organized, um, not do it so haphazardly that I did. Um, so uh, that's pretty much the schedule. On Thursday, we kind of start all over. On Thursday, we dial to book Friday and Saturday. Um, book Friday and Saturday means six to eight appointments on each day. So we want to have right around that 28 to 32 opportunities so we can sit with at least 20 families to see if we can help solve the problem that they have. And we want to sell at least 10 policies with those 20 sits that we do. Um, I think early on that's a good goal to have to book 30, sit with 20, sell 10. You know, and with that, with that strategy, it's going to you know, earn you a really good net income uh, after leads. Uh, lead costs, chargebacks, you know, so on and so forth. So that's what was taught to me. You know, the landmines have already been all set, as Mark Mead often says to us. Um, no reason to step on those again. Uh, so that's that's the strategy that I have with my dials. Uh, if I ever have a challenge with my dials, I simply just look at my my my, my dial tracker 
and it's pretty much right there. The answers are there. If there's not, an act, not enough activity on that dial tracker, that's probably why I didn't book enough leads. I was just talking to an agent earlier and she's like, yeah, I only got you know three leads and I dialed 80, 80 I had 80 dials. And I'm like, well, you would have had nine if you dialed 240. I mean, it's just the math and it just works out. And the more you're on the phone, the better you'll get with it. Uh, so uh, we'll talk about phone here in just a second. So get on that lead strategy early and uh, be consistent with it. I think a quick 15 minute phone call with Sasha uh, here at the corporate is a great use of 15 minutes. You can uh, give a call or look on our look on our, our website here to get her Calendly uh, website. It's calendly.com slash lead hyphen pending, uh, planning, lead hyphen planning. Uh, but a great use of time um, to kind of go over your budget and lead strategy and together with Sasha and your manager, um, put something together that makes a lot of sense. Um, the leads that I'm using, uh, I started my Everquote campaign when I was in the Venetian in Las Vegas uh, earlier this year, and that has that really worked well for me uh, starting out part time because I had complete control of the lead types I was running, where I was getting the leads from, as far as what towns or zip codes, and the ability to pause the campaign when I knew I couldn't get in touch with that lead right away. So. Everquote made a lot of sense for me for those reasons. Lead type, where they were coming from, so I knew how far away I was gonna have to drive to get there, and the ability to pause the campaign when I knew I couldn't get back to them, because with every lead, whether it's mortgage, Everquote, internet, Facebook final expense, time is of the essence on those leads, and you have to get in touch with them right away. You're not the only show in town, there's other people calling these folks, so you need to get in touch with these guys right away. So Everquote was great for me in the very, very beginning. Plus, you know, with their matching of the initial deposit, it brought my uh, return on investment um, in a great spot and my lead cost down. Uh, Facebook leads, um, they're unlimited. You hear it spoke about all the time. Between social insurance leads and secure agent mentor leads, uh, those leads are phenomenal. We have access to them, Sean has done the negotiating for us and we get a great price on them right now i'm using the uh, elite social insurance leads i'm using those a lot again uh, all about efficiency it's within 20 miles of my house and the information is all double verified and i get a 30 lead order usually filled in you know probably about 48 to 72 hours i'll have all 30 leads so i can order those leads on a Friday and I can have them all, you know, you know, all in my box on Monday. So come the dial day, I have 30 fresh leads and I just keep repeating, I just keep repeating. Um, in the beginning, I did do a lot of cherry pick leads uh, through the CRM. Real important that you talk to your manager about how to set the toggle alerts on those. You wanna make sure they're on for the counties that you want to use them for because then you'll get the email directly and you'll be able to know to log right in to get those cherry pick leads that are available. Um, and if you get your discount code early enough, uh, they'll be 20% off. So it's a way for you to get a big volume of leads at a really, really low cost. And um, there's definitely some gold in those. You hear about the stories all the time on Facebook and the men and women that are doing a great job with the cherry pick leads. So I have my toggle set when those emails come across. They're usually super early in the morning. Um, I go right on there and I buy them all. I buy everything that's on there and then, um, and then I have them for myself and my team. So make sure that you uh, set that toggle alert for your desired states and counties to get alerted right away. Um, in Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, I'm using lead concepts for mortgage. Um, again, there's a link for that inside the CRM and you can talk to uh, Clay over there and he'll help you out. Uh, and uh, I'm, doing, I'm doing a lot of mortgage for all three states. I have every county that's available in every state. And uh, staying super busy with the mortgage. And then I also did a Lead Co. Um, lead Co is Retro Mail, Retro Mortgage. And I did every county in the, um, in the state of Connecticut uh, for that. So I was really excited to be able to have that. And the, uh, I've liked that a lot. So those are, the, those are, the, um, those are some of them. I'm also using Mail Pro, Mail Drop, which is the $387 a week-ish. Um, mortgage program that Sasha has and 
those those people definitely want uh, mortgage protection. There's no question that's exactly what they want. There's there's no disguising that's exactly what they want. So when those leads come in, I mean, they book extremely easy. They're ready for you to come over. They're waiting for you to come over. They're glad that we reached back out to them because they, they let it slide by. You know, bigger things or other things got in their way. Um, so they are uh, they're definitely excited about you know us coming over and getting that done really easy for them. Uh, one thing that I can share with leads, um, when you get enough lead, when your lead flow is accurate and you can work with your manager on this, you don't freak out about getting one bad lead or a bad phone number or if someone said they didn't fill it out, which is never true. There's, there's only one way to get the lead and that's because they clicked on the information they put in their favorite color, hobby or dream vacation. Um, but when a lead comes across and it's, 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 you don't connect with them, there's no reason to freak out about that kind of lead. Did I, did I freak out in the very beginning? Did I think I was burning $20 literally in the garbage can? Yes, but now knowing better, um, if you have the right lead flow and that's, you know, everything's in place, you're gonna get those. It's just part of, it's just part of it. So um, I think all leads work. Um, Eric Anthony and I were talking the other day and he asked me what was going on and what, was, what I was getting for leads and I said, Eric, I'm buying every lead I can. And I'm, you know, just like we talked about way back in December, and uh, I'm running them all. When I get a no show, when I get a cancel, when I get a short no sale, um, when that happens, you know, I have plenty of leads to go through to, you know, look who's in the area to start knocking the doors and see who's available. Whether that's EverQuote, Facebook, Mortgage, Mail Pro Drop, I'm, I'm door knocking them all when I'm in that area. I want to try to resolve every lead, and um, it, it might take a while because I have a bunch, but. Um, these people reached out to us to get information on you know life insurance so it's our job it's our requirement to get the information out to them uh, moving into phone script I, you know now versus the first day I've spent years on the phone with the car business and when you call someone you guys have all gotten a, that phone call from the car dealership and they're all talking really really fast and they're being definitely sales first people this is definitely a different phone call uh, you have to be much more intentional when you make this call. Uh, you have to speak a lot slower. You have to pause just long enough to make sure that they understand what you're saying, but not too long where you give them a chance to talk. You never want to give them a question or a statement where you can lose control. So if you're asking, so if you're calling, you say, you know, hey Bob, this is Eric. How are you doing today? Click. I mean, you're giving them a chance to say, you know, my, my day's going terrible. Yeah, I can't talk right now. Um, my mindset is if I'm calling a lead and the lead is a male, if a male answers the phone, I'm going with the assumption that that male is the person I'm looking for. So if, I, so if it's Bob on the lead and I hear a male answer the phone, I'm like, hey Bob, this is Eric. I'm getting back to you regarding the request that you sent in regarding the mortgage protection or the life insurance or the final expense benefits. You said your favorite dream vacation is going to Maine. I assume you remember filling that out, correct? That's the first time I let them answer, and the only answer that they can answer is yes. There is no, there is no, uh, I don't remember, I can't recall. It's very unique, it's very specific to them. Um, so that's really important that you have the right posture, the right tone, the right voice inflection, how quickly you speak, is it a, is it a younger client, is it, is it an older client? You know, so it's really important that your tone and voice inflection and your posture, learning that from Jamie Euphemia, uh, when you make these phone calls that you say it the right way um, And again, you always have to be in control of the call the whole entire time because as soon as you ask that open-ended question with a, without a controlled answer um, You chance losing that phone call and it happens just like that. So really important. I still I, I make mistakes still today um, So I'm working on it every day, but it's it's what's going to get you a higher book rate when you do make contact because when you make X's on that on that dial tracker you know that's always like oh another x you want those check marks circles you're going to get a lot of them x's you want those low um you definitely want to have more check marks than x's um at the end of the day so um again assume that the, the, the gender that you're looking for if that gender answers the phone that that's the person you're looking for so there's no reason to confirm that's the person just go with that's the person um there's no reason to ask how they're doing because no disrespect, I don't really care how they're doing. I care that I set the appointment. And whether they're doing well or, or crappy, 
you know, it's no consequence of that. I want to set the appointment. That's all I care about. I just want to sell the contact. That's it. I don't want to really know much more than that. Now, when we do get down to booking the, uh, the book and the call, uh, booking the appointment, I ask as many tie downs as I possibly can. If I do get any complaints or objections throughout the call, I use Matt Smith's line and I say, perfect. That's the purpose of my call, uh, which makes probably no sense to what they're saying, but that's, that's my response to what they've said to me, whether they're at the doctor's, it's not a good time, they just woke up, they're leaving for work, perfect. That's the purpose of my call. Again, my name is Eric, and I'm calling regarding the state-regulated final expense benefits that you contacted me on through Facebook. You said your favorite hobby is knitting. I assume you remember filling that out. And again, there's only one answer to that question, and it's yes. And then I go back into booking the appointment. Um, the less that they complain and the less that they object, the quicker they can get off the phone so I can get, you know, I can get the appointment. Um, so, you know, the typical Facebook leads, um, they never really include a spouse or someone else on there. So you always want to make sure that you're making a note or a sticky note or something on your device where you're always asking, is, is there, a, I, there's not a spouse, you know, mentioned on the form, Bob, is there a loved one or is this just for you? Are you married or are you single? You really want to dig that information out politely and respectfully. Um, they may have recently passed. They may have been recently divorced. There's a bunch of stuff happening out there, of course. But you want to make sure that when you get to the house, if there are two decision makers in the house, that there's two decision makers there when you show up. Because if you do go to, you know, quote unquote, one-legged appointment, um, it's going to, you have to automatically reschedule that. You're, they're never going to make a decision. Even if they tell you they can make the decision, that they don't need their spouse to make the decision, they make all the decisions. When you get to the end of the presentation, you show them the good, better, best, or plan one, two, or three, however you're calling it, they're going to be like, thanks for the information. I really appreciate it. I'm going to be checking with Mary and we'll let you know. I've been through it too many times. Uh, myself personally, even though I've been told from the beginning, I thought I could overcome it, but even though I was told from the beginning that uh, just don't even engage, just go ahead and rebook. Um, so you want to try to cross that bridge over the phone and not have to deal with it um, once you get to the house and burn, burn, burn an hour of appointments. All right, so moving into tie downs. Um, I will try to get as many tie downs as I possibly can with the clients. Um, the clients love hearing their name. They love uh, talking about themselves and their home. So I'll say, what color is your home? And they'll tell me. And I'll say, you know, will your home show up easily on my GPS? Do I need to know any major landmarks that will make it easier to find for your home, Bob? And they'll continue to tell me that, you know, the driveway is on South Street, but their home is on Main Street. You know, you have to take a left after the v VFW. Um, you know, if it's a, if it's a multi-family dwelling, which is something that you want to ask early, uh, if it, the address is 80 country lane, which seems just like a normal house on a normal street, um, you still want to ask, is that a single family dwelling? Is that a multi-family dwelling? Cause if it doesn't have an apartment unit suite floor number, you get to the house without that information, you're going to be a little bit stuck. So, uh, very important to ask single family dwelling or multi-family dwelling, uh, color of the home. Is the number on the home, uh, is the number on the home, on the mailbox, on the curb, or all three, or one of them? Should I park on your driveway, or should I park on the street in front of your home, Bob? What would be best? And um, I'll ask, you know, should I uh, knock on the front door? Is the side door better, or do I go to the back door? Again, you don't know. They, they don't typically have strangers over to their house. So these are questions that you need to ask, and they're more than willing to answer them. Again, they reached out to us. We're filling the order. We just want to find out, you know, how to get into the house. Um, from there, I'll typically, you know, make sure um, that I ask uh, that, you know, if they are a smoker or non-smoker, they may qualify for some discounts. Again, it doesn't make a difference what the answer is. If they're a smoker, they get a discount. If they're a non-smoker, they get a discount. It doesn't make a difference. With, with the Eagle Premier product, um, the fact that they, you know, we have a non-smoking rate for the first three years and they have a year to quit, prove that they quit, um, they get a discount either way. I'll also ask, they may qualify for a discount, whom do you do your banking with? And they'll tell me who they do their banking with. Again, doesn't matter what the answer is, they qualify for the discount. If they say cash or money order, you know you're going to have to walk in there, you know, prepare to figure that piece out and maybe sign them up for Chime Bank, 
which you can do in about three, four minutes, Chime Bank, uh, it's a great asset in the field. Um, they, if they are using the Direct Express card, the Social Security credit card, uh, MasterCard, you know that's gonna be either a Transamerica application, and if they don't qualify for that, it's gonna be an AIG application. You'll know that information walking in so you can be prepared. If they say any other bank besides those situations, um, is that checking or savings? Again, we ask this because now they know it's not free. And if they say, well, I thought it was free, then you can have that conversation right there, not have to have that conversation in the home. At least that's how I do it. Um, and uh, again, then we know what bank that is. Sometimes people don't know the routing numbers. We know the bank already. We'll be able to get the routing number. Pretty simple. Um, so I really, I always ask those questions. And the last question or the last thing that I give them is the confirmation code for the appointment. It's the same code every single time. It's M as in Monday, 76, Y as in yellow. I ask them to read it back to me. I let them know that I'll need to see that confirmation code when I arrive at the appointment to verify that you know I'm at the right home. And I'll also need to see their driver's license or state ID when I get to the house. So please have that on the kitchen table when I arrive. I'll be helping out a lot more families in the area and that'll make it go a lot more efficient. I only have about 10 or 15 minutes to review the plans with you as there's a lot more families that I need to help. So I don't have a lot of time to spend. Again, you wanna set that up prior to you getting to the house. Super important. The, um, and just, and kind of just like the phones, we definitely wanna know, um, you should know who your favorite in-home trainers are. I think it'd be weird if you didn't know that, if ever asked. Um, in no particular order, my favorite in-home trainers um, are, are um, Frankie Euphemia, um, Linda Lampasso, and um, <laughs> Matt Smith. So, um, and again, you know, and also for the phones as well, uh, for the phones, my favorites are Jamie Euphemia. I think she does a great job talking about posture, um, attitude, voice, tone inflection. Dominique does a great job, and again, Matt Smith does a great job. I'm always talking about perfect. That's the purpose of my call. Um, I got that. I got that down pat. I love doing that. So talking now about in home uh, now versus day one. I think being 24 years in the car business, when I first was going into the homes to help families with uh, with their insurance situation, it was getting very transactional. And in the car business, the more they pay the month, the better. As soon as they sign, they own it. There is no cooling off period where. In the life insurance business, it's not like that. Uh, they do have the opportunity to have a 30-day free look, and um, I had definitely had some chargebacks in the very beginning, making it a little bit too transactional. So I had to kind of reset myself and realize that this was a different sale, more of an emotional sale. And when we do find, you know, the right budget, you know, I want to make sure that's a budget that they can pay no matter what the situation. If they need four tires, the air conditioning you know, goes out, the dog breaks a leg, whatever the scenario is, I wanna make sure that's something that they can do every single month. So with that, um, when I start the in-home, we'll do a quick, 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 quick rapport building phase. We'll talk about, you know, how long they lived there, how they met, maybe a trophy or a car or a bumper sticker that I saw in the driveway, uh, just a really 60, 90 seconds. That'll be really, really quick. Then uh, to get back to business, you know, I'll go right to the lead and I'll tap on the lead. And I'll say, okay, you know, again, my name is Eric, um, and I'll tell them a little bit about myself. I'll tell them I live locally here in Tallinn County. I'll let them know that, you know, I went to University of Connecticut. You know, there's a lot of UConn fans here in Connecticut. I'll tell them that this summer I'll be married 22 years to, uh, to Carrie, that I have three children, 14, 10, and 8 years old. I'll typically go to my phone and show them a picture from my digital business card of my wife and myself and my three kids from Easter in front of church. Um, people love to look at that. Um, it makes me a real person. It makes me a father. It makes me a dad. Um, I'll typically talk about my dad and mom. They'll be married 50 years this summer. My dad's going to be 80 years old next month. So talking about these things make me a real person. You know, I'm the field underwriter here to help them. Um, and I tell them I'm, why I do this job, and it is my full-time job. It's not part-time. I don't do this to to get away from something. I'm really passionate about helping families and protecting families, and I'm equally as passionate as uh, I can be to provide for my own family. Um, and that's why I do this, and that's why I sit with 120 families a month, and I work as many days as I have to to protect the families and provide for mine that I have to do. At this point, I ask them why they filled out the form. 
why why am I here? I said, hey, folks, you know, you filled out this form. Why don't you tell me a little bit about why you filled this out and um, and why I'm here today? And I kind of give them the floor. I give them the mic, and I let them talk. And then I stop talking. And sometimes it's really quiet, but they need to tell me why I'm there. They need to tell me how I can help them, what they're looking to protect. And if they need help with that, I will help them with that. But typically it comes out, I'll say, folks, you know, typically I'm here for one of three reasons or four reasons uh, with final expense. I'm here because you have no barrier insurance. You have some, but you feel like you need a little bit more. Uh, you're looking to leave behind a legacy for kids, grandkids, nieces, or nephews. Um, or you've recently known someone that's died. Which one is it for you? If they say none of them, I'll say that's kind of weird because 100% of all my clients see me for one of these four reasons and I get an answer from them. They have to answer that question for me to move you know, through the worksheet. It's really important to get that, uh, get that information, uh, information out. So they can go up to 10 minutes, you know, whether they cry, I cry, you know, they start telling me stories. Um, the longer they're telling me about the reasons why I'm there, the better. When um, I feel that they've proven to me enough that they need the coverage and there's a value for me of being there is a value of the coverage that they're looking for because I know when value exceeds price a decision is made whether it's in on cars or on life insurance so that's kind of my mindset with that um, I'll go into you know what does it look like if something were to happen here um, if it's mortgage protection you know Bob if something happened to Mary yesterday, she didn't come home from work, what's the next 30 days look like here? And Mary, no disrespect, you know, you can't talk because you're no longer here. So Bob, why don't you share with me what it looks like here for the next 30 days? And regardless if Mary's a major breadwinner or not, that's gonna leave a gigantic hole in their, in their, in their household with, you know, with one of the parents not being there, regardless. Um, so I have to make it real. Uh, final expense, same scenario. You know, who's getting the phone call Bob, if you pass away, who's the next kin? Who's, who's picking up the pieces? Who's taking off time from work? Who's flying in from out of state you know, to, for the funeral, the viewing, the remembrance, the burial, the cremation, whatever the scenario is? Um, people have to, have to realize that there's more involved than someone just passing away. It's, it's a big to-do and there are expenses that are involved with it. So once we get to that point, what I'll do is I'll show them my state license. That's not required but I will show them my state license because I think that puts them at ease a little bit. Um, it shows them that I do have my license and that kind of calms them down a little bit. I actually have had clients take pictures of me. Um, they've taken pictures of my driver's license. That's all fine. You know, if that helps them, um, then that helps me. That's, that's, that's all well and fine. Um, then I'll show them my worksheet book. On the cover of my worksheet book has all the carriers that we have. It talks about at the bottom that I specialize in mortgage protection, I specialize in life insurance, and I specialize in you know, income or asset protection. Um, and that kind of sets the structure for the appointment. I also highlight that Americo um, is the, America's largest privately held life insurance company. They've been in business for more than 100 years. Um, and they have some really unique products that I think you may qualify for. Um, and I also highlight ReliaShield. ReliaShield is not an insurance company, but it is a identity theft carrier that we here at Family First Life believe in. Um, you probably already have some type of identity theft, but if for some reason you don't, uh, we'll talk about uh, fam uh, we'll talk about ReliaShield and why it feels better than what you have or um, something that you should strongly consider. Um, uh, from there, I'll go right to the worksheet. Uh, you have to ask all the questions on the worksheet. None are more important than the other. None you can skip. You have to ask them all. It's really important that you go through the entire worksheet and you're really specific about it. I think the way that the worksheet is laid out is perfect. Again, I typically, you know, early on in the worksheet will skip to the bottom and get the information on the beneficiaries. Uh, first name, middle name, last name, phone number, date of birth, relationship to the insured. Uh, that makes it real, uh, it brings that emotionality up, and again, when I'm doing the application, I don't have to ask for that information later, because they already have the information. You always want to ask that golden question, what do you have to offset the cost of the mortgage when you die? 401k, stocks, bonds, significant savings, things like that. 
uh, when they give you information there, um, and it's something that we should take note of. Um, again, you know, finish the appointment while you are there, if it's for mortgage protection or final expense. Um, get a statement from one of those accounts if there was something there that we should talk about and leave them with a trifold. Um, that's one thing that I learned from Sean Ruggiero while at convention earlier this year is that you want to take care of the appointment while you're there, leave them a trifold, get a statement, and then ask a specialist or your upline manager for assistance on that. Um, you know, doing annuities is not our bread and butter, but it is, it is something that we can help clients with, especially during the glide phase of their, of their life. If for any reason you have a challenge in the home and you're unable to um, protect them and they want to think about it or this, that, or the other thing, you need to call a manager from the house. There's no value in you getting back in your car, driving to the next home, driving to your home or the next home uh, without, without a check from that last home. Uh, calling your manager from the car, you know, there's no value there. So when you're in the home, you have to call the manager that you're working with, call them twice. That's usually the indicator that they should be picking up whatever time it is, whatever day of the week it is. It doesn't matter. You're out there protecting families if you need help. If for some reason they don't answer, uh, call the agent hotline, which you can get from your upline. Super important. Um, I typically call in nine out of 10 homes that I sit in. Even when I don't have a question or don't need help with underwriting or whatever the scenario is, um, I think it provides a lot of you know, value for the client when they hear that I'm calling a senior field underwriter or a senior vice president um, to talk about their case. I think that gives them, that gives them a really feel good situation when that's happening and again, cements the whole relationship you know, in. Um, one thing that does happen sometimes in the home is that the clients will say they want to shop when you've given them option A or B um, or maybe even given them three options. Uh, when that happens, I get I flip my worksheet book over and I said, okay, great. Who do you want to shop with? I'm always starting with Americo, I'm going to American Amicable, sometimes John Hancock or Mutual of Omaha, um, AIG, Transamerica. You know, who do you want to shop with? I have every A plus rated insurance carrier in the state. Um, no one else that's going to come here to help protect your family is going to have any product that I don't have. So let's go shopping, and I'll start pricing out other products just to show them how competitive Americo is. And in some case, when you plug in living benefits, you plug in cash back option, you plug in the fact that we have a 25 year cash back option with living benefits that no one else has in the market, um, it starts to make a lot more sense. Um, I think, and like I said earlier, I kind of bounce around a little bit, but you definitely want to have your top three in-home trainers. Uh, for me, it's Linda Lampasso, Brian Mendenhall. If you haven't seen Brian's, um, call to close series on YouTube. You got to see it. It's you know it's you're 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 struggling in the field if you haven't seen that. Along with Frank Lufemia's uh, cash back presentation on the HMS 125 and 150 product. Um, got to have it. Got to see it. It's you know it's a it's a must. It's a must. So after I leave the home, uh, I think drive time is something important that we should talk about as I wrap up here. Um, we have a lot of drive time. So what I do with my drive time is I have all my resumes on my passenger seat. Uh, there's no better time to call a resume is when you just had a successful sit with a, with a client or you had an unsuccessful sit with a client. Either way, it's the best time to call a resume because you're either going to resell yourself on the opportunity yourself or you're going to be pumped up that you just helped another family and helped out your family as well. So a great time to call a resume. <coughs> Pardon me. And um, once I've gone through that stack three times and I'm still uh, en route to my next appointment is I'll start calling the agents on my team. Either ones that are just still finishing up class, getting ready to take their exam, or ones that are in the field actively every day helping, helping protect families. Uh, I want to see how they're doing. I want to tell them how I'm doing. Maybe there's a nugget that we can share with each other that was happening in the field uh, with a specific, uh, specific uh, case a prescription, you know, whatever the case may is. Um, I don't listen to the radio in the car anymore. I used to, um, but now it's all, it, you know, I'm working from, from point A to point B. Um, I think, you know, I didn't mention earlier, but I think it's really important to always have your AmeriCorps policies that you have on yourself in your bag so you can show those to the client while you're in the house. 
Um, if you don't have an AmeriCorps policy on yourself, I would you know, ask yourself why. Um, there's an AmeriCorps policy out there for everyone. Everyone qualifies for some type of AmeriCorps policy, so write one on yourself, get it in the mail, put it in your briefcase or satchel or backpack so you can show it to the client when you're helping them out. Um, that's something that I got from my Killerman and it's definitely helped me in the field since um, I started carrying those uh, policies around with me that we've had for quite some time now. So don't forget uh, FFLNewAgent.com, FFLMentor.com. Those are two websites I go to frequently. Um, if you haven't seen Zach Carpenter's What to Have in Your Bag um, YouTube video, What to Have in Your Bag and more, um, definitely find that. It's out there. Ask your manager if you can't find it. Uh, they'll be able to find it for you. Uh, but it's Zach Carpenter. He's at Family First Life Stars and Stripes out in San Antonio, Texas, uh, working with uh, Family First Life Texas and Eric Anthony. Again, you know, the attitude in your activity, um, it, you always have to check yourself on your attitude and activity. That's super duper duper important. And if you have not yet registered for the convention at Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas, uh, first weekend in February, I would definitely do that. Um, they're expecting greater than 4,000 people. I don't think the room holds that many people, so uh, you will be in the overflow room watching the whole thing live on TV, which is kind of weird. I think you would want to be in the main room, so get registered right away at ffltakeover.com. Um, thank you, Sean. Thank you, Eric. Um, I think here towards the end of July, I'm right around $200,000 issue paid uh, with five months, four months, eight, August, September, October, November, December, five months still to go. Um, I've already eclipsed my income from the car dealership uh, on my best year. So I'm really excited to see what these last five months have to hold. And um, thank you all.